The anti-Bitcoin and crypto sentiment runs wild. And what I really think about when I see these types of messages come about is that the people just need a little more help. And what I'm talking about today is there was a, a nice little Twitter account from Elizabeth Warren. This is Senator Elizabeth Warren from Massachusetts here in the United States. And she has made it uh, her rally cry uh, to build an anti-crypto army. So we've seen this before, and we'll probably see it again as different senators and congressmen and women start to rally against crypto. And when I see these things, I just think to myself, how did these things go so wrong? Because uh, Elizabeth Warren was pretty anti-bank for the longest time. And I think she still is. But you have to understand, the problem with, with politicians is that they're politicians. <laughs> just kidding. Really what it comes down to is this. She has to get reelected. Her constituents come up to her and say, look, I have a problem with FTX, with BlockFi, with Voyager, with Celsius, or whatever it is, and I got ripped off. And you hear these things and you say, okay, I'm going to protect the little guy and I'm going to go against crypto. And I think there's a problem when somebody like Elizabeth Warren, who has done so much to, to rally against the banking sector, and then she hears these things and go, okay, this is the same thing. I need to help out my constituents so I can A, help people, and B, get reelected. And when this happens, I just see it's a little bit of a little bit of, uh, of misguided trust in what's happening. There is a huge difference between the scam artist and the thief that is Sam Bankman free with FTX and the Voyagers and the Celsius and, and the BlockFi and everything else that's out there. That is, there's a huge difference between that and an actual legitimate project such as Bitcoin and other crypto products that actually have real utility. And uh, the thread just kind of goes over what she's going to do. I'm going to skip over that. That was actually pretty funny right there. And a lot of her things that are rally cry is that she just talks about how this is not a good investment. This is a terrible investment. And she lumps in Bitcoin with Dogecoin and everything else. I'm not here to debate that part. But I got to tell you, as far as like a, a poor investment, in reality, if we take a look at it as far as a store of value, Bitcoin's been a fantastic investment. In the 80s, I mean, $20 is going to get you a pretty good amount of, of, of food in your cart, like you can see here in the graphic. In 2000, it's not going to get you anything. And in 2022, if you're spending $20 in Supermax in Puerto Rico, you're not getting anything. I hate to tell you that. But if we take a look at just a couple of years ago, uh, 10, 12 years ago, one Bitcoin 2011 could get you the same amount of, of food in the cart because guess what? It was about $20 or $30. Just 10 years later, one Bitcoin can get you a pretty nice car. 69,000 and 2030, who knows what it's going to be. So if we talk about the actual product as being a poor investment and things that are doing, I just think that Elizabeth is just missing the mark. I don't think she really understands really what's, what's going on. I mean, heck, uh, even Michael Burberry from the big short fame uh, said, look, this was just today, about five hours ago, I was wrong to say sell. So I said, hey, Jim Cramer, you should take notes. This is how it's actually done when you are incorrect. So this is, I still think, a, a pretty good investment for me. I can't tell you what to do. I'm not an investment advisor. So when I say these things, I look out and I say that, you know, to instead of calling for hate and to really go against Elizabeth Warren, I need you to help her. I need you to help her see what she is potentially missing. How do you do that? Very simple. There's this website, warren.senate.gov. And I'm going to link this website in the description below. And there's a little button right here that says, share your opinion. Now, let me stress this. If you're going to share your opinion, make it constructive. Help her to see the light of where she may be missing some vital pieces of information. And you can go even go down and say a meeting request, a tour request, or whatnot, and put in your information. Now, there are some things that are required, an email and things like that. I'm not saying you should give the uh, perfect email, but whatever you want to do. And then just kind of give her a message as to why you are an investor and why you think crypto is going pretty far. So... Let me just think about that in the comments section. Again, I'm not here to, to spread discourse or hate. I'm here to try to enlighten people and help them get to where they want to go. But I must tell you that um, a person that is really against banks, like Elizabeth Warren, there's a statistic that actually scares me. And this was uh, the Kobayashi letter. <clears throat> it talks about the total banks in the U.S. by year. You know, in 1920, we had 31,000 banks. And then just, you know, 50 years later, 1970, we had 13,500, a little bit less than half or more than half. Now in 2022, we have 4,200 banks. 
And it doesn't take a rocket science to, to figure out where we're going. We're going to see less and less banks. They're going to consolidate, and they're going to pretty much own everything. And if we get that factor into a CBDC, then we're going to have a lot of problems going down uh, in the future. However, as I've always said, just because we get a CBDC doesn't mean that will rule the roost forever. It just takes one time for them to shut off somebody's purchasing power for them to say, you know what, maybe there's an alternative option that I keep hearing about that I could potentially get into and, and actually own and, and, and have my own forms of, of money, which is solid money, might be Bitcoin or some other digital assets. So I think that uh, they're, we're going in the wrong direction. However, there are some good shining lights. And this right here is Congressman uh, Tom Emmer. And he is uh, for the banking, he's uh, doing a, uh, on the banking committee, I believe, where he has the FDIC chair. And this is uh, Martin, Martin Gruenberg of the FDIC. And he's gonna say a couple of things. And uh, this is from Nick Carter. And he, and he catches them in a couple of lies. So this is about a minute and a half. And one of those is he talks about, you know, if we, if we sell Silicon Valley Bank, uh, will it be easy to have 24 seven access like the uh, different crypto uh, producers actually had? And the second one is, did the FDIC ever say to any other bank that will potentially be purchasing Silicon Valley Bank that this will be overly burdensome or onerous uh, for them to service these crypto platforms? So, just take a listen. Uh, will you commit that a bank that buys Signet will be able to use it to facilitate 24-7 access to the banking system for digital asset companies? I'm, I'm happy to look into that. I don't know who the buyer was, but be glad to look into it and, and follow up with you in regard. You're not going to block uh, the buyer from uh, doing 24-7 uh, banking for digital asset companies, is that correct? If, if that's the nature of the acquisition, yes. And will you commit that a bank that buys Signet, or the bank that did, will be able to, uh, to uh, onboard new digital asset customers? Again, I'd, I'd like to look into the transaction, but I'd be glad to follow up with you in regard to it. When the FDIC sold off Silicon Valley's bank, uh, Valley Bank's deposits to First Citizens, did that include deposits from any digital asset firms or VCs in the digital asset space? I believe uh, all of the deposits from uh, the failed Silicon Valley Bank were transferred to First Citizens. In Including the digital? All of them, yes. Were all of uh, SVB's deposits from digital asset businesses, I, I, again, <laughs> transferred to citizens? That's yes, what you're saying? My understanding, First Citizens assumed all the deposits. Has the FDIC ever communicated implicitly or explicitly, sir, to any banks that their supervision will be more onerous in any way if they take on new or maintain existing digital asset clients? No. Thank you. The so, yeah, there is some shining light out there. It looks like there are some people out there fighting for the little guy, the crypto and digital asset investor. And then just to get to the point of what uh, was said here by uh, – uh, Martin Grunberg, where he said, no, we would never say that it's, it's overly burdensome to do any kind of banking with uh, crypto and digital assets. Uh, this is from uh, the FDIC website itself. And it's, uh, it says quite clearly here, issuing or holding as principal crypto assets that are issued, stored or transferred on an open public and or decentralized network or similar system is highly likely to be inconsistent with safe and sound banking practices. So I don't really... Uh, couldn't say that uh, they would explicitly say it's a little bit tougher, but it does say it on the website. However, to be fair, they do say uh, very clearly banking organizations are neither prohibited nor discouraged from providing banking services to customers of any specific class or type as permitted by law or regulation. But again, on the flip side, they're saying you could do it. It just ain't going to be easy. So let me just think about that. And uh, to finish up, there are some good pieces of information. This is from uh, Seeking Alpha, New Bull Market is Born. And they just go over some, some little highlights of why they think that uh, a bull market is, is here already. And it said here that the NASDAQ 100 is now in a bull market. And I was thinking to myself, I'm like, is it really in a bull market? But right here, it says it, says it pretty clearly. You're setting yourself up for uh, one of the best quarters of NASDAQ 100 since 2020. And we're going to see as far as like percentage gains. And that got me thinking like, well, how, how far off are we for NASDAQ? And I took a look and over, over well, just, well, first of all, I'll just go to a day. Looking pretty good, quite honestly. Over five days, all right, now we're talking. One month, mm -hmm, yeah. Six months, still pretty good. And then we take a look over five years, still pretty darn good, uh, even, even if we take a look at the peak. So 
if we're taking a look at price action, things are moving in a direction which I didn't think we would really see. This is why I dollar cross average because I'm not here to time the market market perfectly. I'm just here to be a participant. And what is that? What has that done for uh, the market itself? Well, it was pretty good today. A little bit of a drop off. I think we hit around twenty nine thousand. Now we're down to almost twenty eight thousand. And there's a little bit of action sideways. Here we go. XRP is up twenty seven percent in uh, seven days because of rumors of potential settling of the court case against Ripple, but hey, who knows? And that is it for today. There's a couple of things uh, before we take off and I can make mention of. First of all, uh, CoinLedger, who is uh, a sponsor of the show. Uh, this is for tax software, which is what I use personally. Uh, they just got it in to where uh, they're a you're able to connect your Cardano wallets, which is something that uh, when David came on, he talked about, we're going to do this pretty soon. And I was like, yeah, they usually do it. And here we are today. So they've done that. This is what I think people have been asking for. Again, very simple to use for tax software. Don't be afraid of taxes. You can make it super simple. From the time that I set it all up, API integration, shot it off to my CPA, 30 minutes. Link in the description. I even show you how to do it. And lastly, uh, we had a great episode. This was really fun, actually, today. It was, uh, it was me, Ben, and Guy, Coin Bureau, and in the Cryptoverse. And we went over just a plethora of different things, different stuff that we talked about. Uh, the Binance lawsuit, Shanghai upgrade, the altcoins that we are getting into, uh, and Ben's uh, comments about <laughs> that, the Fed and fundamentals, and then, of course, the world reserve currencies, as we see the dollar is being uh, trifled off, and it uh, looks like uh, China is coming to the action. And Guy had a really good insight in that. So I will link that at the end of this video and also in the description, but that is it for today. So look. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Let me talk about is time sensitive. But that's it for today. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.